guys, welcome to another video of Nerdy Tech Tips channel. Today we're going to uh, learn how to set up your own personal cloud storage. Now it could be for many reasons you want to do this. I intend to do this because I do not like um, the hassle of transferring my photos and videos from my iPhone to my PC. It's a bit of a hassle. Sometimes it syncs, sometimes it doesn't sync. I end up buying another iCloud storage so I can upload to iCloud and then I can download it from iCloud which is a bit of a hassle and it doesn't work really well. If you've got unlimited connection at home, you can set up your personal cloud storage. It's really nice and simple. Here's a way we're going to be using own cloud because they have a wide variety of applications on every single platform. So basically if you own an Android you can use Linux, Windows or iPhone wherever you wanna wherever you have media and you want to upload to your personal cloud storage that's a really good way of doing it that way so I always advise you guys whenever, whenever I'm using anything go to the official website so for this purpose I will be using VirtualBox so go to their virtualbox.org install it download it from here and the next thing you want to do is go to oncloud.org when you go to their main page this is the main page you see you want to hit on download and you want to click on appliances so when you click on appliance here is our download virtualbox image now the reason why i'm not going with any uh, anything uh you know other than virtualbox image because it's pretty much easy to set up for every non-technical guy this way I can go ahead and install Ubuntu server and go with that and type a lot of commands. You end up have, uh, you might end up having a lot of, uh, you know, trouble with installing LAMP. Sometimes it, it goes really smooth, but I'm not really um, tech savvy when it comes to Linux. So most of you guys aren't that tech savvy as well, I believe. So if you are, I would believe, you know, go ahead and install Ubuntu server and do it that way. There's a lot of support available. But why you want to go through that hassle if that is already being set up for you. Just click on download VirtualBox image and you will get this download file. As you can see on our desktop now I have already downloaded it. Now further on I have installed VirtualBox already. So I will start on my VirtualBox application. As you can see there is no other virtual machines here. It is a fresh installation. So we are going to extract this here. All right, move this file away. Now we've got two files here. One is seems to be a virtual disk, and this is OVA file that will basically allow us to import. Let's see. Double click on it. There you go. It is giving an option to import this file. How simple is that? Let's see if it works for us. It has pre-configured settings, so hopefully that will work for us. Later on we can change some settings if we need to. Hit agree. We imported our virtual machine which is pre-configured. So let's have a look um, on the settings, what is pre-configured on this uh, virtual machine. So this is uh, one CPU. I'm gonna pump it up to four. Hopefully, it, it's not gonna hurt our pre-configured virtual machine. And let's have a look under storage, audio, everything else. Bridged adapter. That's what we would prefer. So it has access to physical network. All right. We just needed to adjust, I guess, processor. And there's nothing else I could um, configure other than. RAM here we can probably assign a little bit of a more RAM because I've got plenty there 32 gigs so out of that 4 gigs it's not gonna hurt my machine and let's go and hit OK all right let's power it on OK start on cloud A critical error has a while running the virtual machine and the machine execution has been stopped. 
they can't, something is wrong, press OK. It seems like our settings did hurt everyone on the machine. We're gonna bring it back, uh, down to default settings. Memory was I guess 2 gig, that was free to sign. Now let's power it on. If it doesn't work this way, we're going to go ahead and manually add this virtual machine. So yeah, as I said, if you change the processor or memory configurations, it does give you trouble. Alright, choose your language and choose your city. It doesn't have an option for Auckland, which is in New Zealand. I do not understand. Let's type New Zealand. Hopefully, it will come with a list of cities. All right. We might want to change it here. Let's select English for New Zealand. That might give us that might give us the correct location. We are in Asia Pacific region, so let's see. That is very strange. There is no Pacific region here. There is Pacific here. Pacific Auckland. Oh, okay. Keep it lower. Keep it lower. That's fine. But it is going to assign this IP, I believe. 5024. If there is any other DNS server, no. We don't have any other DNS server. Well, while it's actually setting up stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and download on cloud on my phone so I can create a tutorial and record my screen on cloud by simply share. Okay. There is an application, so it is downloading on our phone now. We do not have uh, these options here. We cannot join into an existing UCS domain or we do not have any Windows Server set up. So we're going to go ahead and manage users information directly on the system. We can set up our organization name, nerdy, tech, tips, email address to activate own cloud appliances. More information. What is a valid email is to activate on but this address can be spread Also at a later point in time. Alright, I believe we need to do this. We can do this. Um let me do this in here. I do not know why. We are not able to type. Oh, it has a different keyboard layout. Well, that worked. We're going to set up our password. Well, this is a domain that is going to be picked up by default. Specify the name of the system. Well, why not to make it a bit simple? Why we want to go with that? We're going to type on cloud. 
dot internet we can make it dot net okay if we have changed over there internet I guess this needs to be changed as well so let's go ahead the root password may only contain SK characters. I don't know, we have never entered a root password. Okay. We're going to go back. Seems like it's talking about this password. Yeah, it was talking about that password. But we're going to configure this system. Seems like we have finished um, updating. It has taken a bit of a long time. If it did allow me to change the CPUs to four CPUs, that would have taken less time. But oh well, I guess we gotta stick with that, and we'll later on we'll see how we can change the CPUs. But for now, let's finish it up. It is telling us to go on to this IP address. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead in our browser. It is HTTPS, so I believe it has self-assigned certificate. Alright. We're going to write 192.168.50.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
OK, nerdy. What other advanced settings? Oh, OK, there are a lot of settings you can actually put in at. Well, we won't be needing that many details. Password does need to be specified. OK, create user. There is a user already activated. Now let's see how we can connect this on our external network. Login. And if we remove login, um, right. so by default it brings us the portal. And when we click here, it takes us to the normal user login page. We enter the user that we created before, and it takes us to this page. Now. On a local um, network, we have the IP address, we don't need to do any port forwarding, I can just simply connect to my router, my phone, and test this out if it's working. But we also, if we want to use it outside the network, the ports we will be forwarding, 443 for SSL, and I've read it online that somewhere that other port needs to be forwarded, which is 8443. So let's figure it out if it works for us. So first, I'm going to do it without pop overing, so we're going to be coming back on my phone. Alright, so now we are on my phone. Over here I have installed OnCloud application. And if we go to OnCloud, as you can see, it is going to ask me to add an account. And over here I've, I've, I've got to enter the IP address, because that's what we know. But it is not going to work, because I'm connected to totally different uh, network so we're going to connect to oh uh, actually we are connected to the correct this is the router now we're going to go ahead and type the ip let's see okay. don't forget to type http yes .50.24 going to go ahead and continue approve seems like it has found it We're asking for a username now go ahead and type in your password All right. As you can see, we are connected. Here are our folders, which are by default there. We can download them. And let's see if we do have a Let's see if we can create a folder. Let's see, upload from your photo library. Scan document. Let's see, create a folder. iPhone. I upload from my iPhone. I'm going to select it directly, directory, and click on plus. Upload from your photo library. If we can, oh, there is an option to select all, which is great. For now, we're going to upload only one picture. We're back here on our PC. Uh, let's have a look. We probably need to just refresh this page. As you can see, iPhone folder is there. That's how you set up your personal cloud storage. Well, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully, you like this video and you learned something from this video. If you like my content, please feel free to subscribe. And if you like this video, thumbs up. And if you don't, you know what to do. Thanks for watching guys.